Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and SA Rugby have officially confirmed a 6.8 million rand deficit for the 2023 years before taxation, um, which is apparently because of a significant game-related expenditure in, in a, I quote, extraordinarily challenging financial year, uh, the unions were told at the annual meeting in Cape Town on Thursday. Uh, apparently, the result of 6.8 million rand uh, deficit has been described as a major achievement by Rian Oberholzer, the CEO of SA Rugby, against a global, rugby, a global rugby landscape in which many other nations have reported significant losses. So in a time where apparently lots of nations are, are reporting much bigger losses, SA Rugby very much celebrating the fact that uh, in a World Cup year, which apparently does usually bear a lot more costs and fewer and, and less income, have posted just a 6.8 million rand deficit. Before we get into exactly what the things were, what everything was spent, uh, spent on and uh, what sort of income was, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Right, so the annual meeting that had to place down in Cape Town, um, obviously the financials were presented. We will get a bit of opportunity uh, to go through the full annual report, which will be published um, on the Supreme Market website next week. But we do have a bit of a... Uh, a look at exactly what happened. So, uh, if we look at uh, the the uh, the revenue, so a sizable thirty eight percent of annual union revenue of one point three five billion rand was expended on the investment in participating in the Vodacom URC and the European Fresh Rugby Club competitions, as well as the Rugby World Cup. So, the URC and the EPC are competitions set SA Rugby back three hundred. And 85 million rand remembering that we're not getting money back from these competitions just yet but that will change in the next year or two and uh, then the rugby world cup uh, costing a further 153 million rand uh, other spring and national team activities uh, were 326 million and securing player image rights and local insurance uh, of one point of 124 million rand accounted for 33 percent whilst the 347 million rand distribution to member unions was 25% of income. So obviously the, the money distributed to the union is still accounting for a very large portion of the money that SA Rugby um, does um, uh, um, give out. Uh, the SLN costs arrived in a year which revenue traditionally declined because of a reduction in the Springbok fixture program. So um, obviously no... Um, sort of incoming tour and stuff like that, and uh, no um, outgoing tour in terms of the, the automation and stuff like that. Um, so just, uh, apparently, the World Cup years, uh, the revenues traditionally do decline, um, which results in a 7% decrease in group revenues from 1.454 billion in 2022 to 1.44 billion um, in 2023. Uh, commenting on this, uh, Rian Alberholz has said uh, it was an extremely... So it's an extraordinary challenging financial year and to achieve this, the outcomes we did both on and off the field was a major achievement. And he said that income declines in Rugby World Cup years while costs go up and for the first time that challenge was compounded by the fact that we continue to invest in Northern Hemisphere participation, which obviously, again, we're not getting money back from. Literally, all we have to do is get 7 million Rand from EPCR and uh, URC and we basically end up making a profit. So you can see how um, that will change. Uh, he said that those investments continue to pay off, but it makes for a very challenging balancing act on an annual basis. Those challenges will, be, will, um, will lessen once we become shareholders in the URC, but the greater financial sustainability of the South African rugby ecosystem remains an ongoing concern. So basically saying that, you know, can we afford to continue doing what we're doing? Well, we might not be able to unless certain things do change. Um, but obviously becoming a member of the URC, becoming a member of the EPCR next year will very much uh, help. Um, with the whole you know, deficit at the moment. Um, the press release says the non-participation in the traditional inbound and outbound series, as mentioned, as well as a shorter version of the rugby championship was a major impact on the revenue, as well as the contractual commitment towards rugby world cup player and management win bonuses increased team costs. So basically, Rashi Rasmus and the team suffering from success with uh, SRA rugby having to contribute towards those bonus, although the impact was softened by securing a performance-based insurance product and a sponsorship arrangement incentive. Yeah, all the sponsors, I think MTN gave them like a couple million rand. Um, so it wasn't all that bad uh, for uh, for um, 
Yes, yeah, so rugby. Another major issue is the Curry Cup. So they said the absence of a Curry Cup sponsor was offset against better than expected revenues from merchandising royalties. Yeah, they didn't make enough bloody shirts. We knew that we couldn't get shirts. We couldn't get merchandise during the World Cup. Nike buckled. We were we here. We we're here to buy our Springbok jerseys. World Cup, yeah. Um, so um, obviously they got so got more money from royalties as well as the test guarantees from the Rugby World Cup warmer matches against Wales and New Zealand. Um, it says the potential deficit was offset by group grant income recognized from World Rugby increasing from 36.4 million 22 to 290.6 million. Now, that's a massive increase. Um, it says that grant income is not reported as revenue, but as operating income. So um, once we get the full financial report, we'll be able to see exactly where all the various money uh, sort of is allocated to. Um, so once again, speaking from uh, uh, from Oberholzer, he says that all international federations are struggling to make ends meet if you look around the rugby world. We are no different to our peers in that, except for the fact that we have managed to report a far more modest operating loss than others have reported. Unlike many of those peers, we do not have any debt and have reported an unqualified audit once again. This is a significant position we have managed to attain considering the legacy of the pandemic and the scale of the annual investments we make in the playing of the game. I'd like to thank all in the sport for their support and contribution in making such an outcome possible. So not panic stations, you know. Um, yes, we all know that rugby is financially in a very awkward situation at the moment. Lots of unions struggling, lots of people, you know, really... Um, you know, having to sort of go creative accounting really necessarily able to try and make things work. No investment in the Curry Cup. Um, apparently, it is supposed to be a sponsor for the Curry Cup, uh, which was dependent on whether it was going to go ahead. We were waiting to see exactly what will happen there. Uh, World Cup, obviously, meaning that we're getting less revenue from match days. Uh, but as mentioned, a, lot, a big a big operating income increase from uh, World Rugby. So it's hopefully a year of taking a step forward. Uh, I think those merchandising royalties will um, be significantly less this year, I don't think we'll be buying as much merch, especially seeing as they have upped the prices as well, um, which a lot of fans are not very happy about. Uh, I think the big thing is obviously we need money from the URC. Once we get money from the URC, we start getting money from EPCR, I think that we'll be closer to hopefully making an operating profit. But uh, nothing to panic about just yet is the word from SA Rugby. We'll have more details. We'll see, when we get that full report, we'll do a video. We'll maybe do a bit of a breakdown, look at some of the, the graphs and stuff. Um, before that, let me know what you think. Is this impressive? Is this something to worry about? How do we fix this? Uh, where can we secure extra money? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.